In this video, we're going to talk about electrochemistry, and in particular, the two types of electrochemical cells. There's the galvanic or voltaic cell, and then the electrolytic cell. So you might think, what does chemistry have to do with electricity? Well, what these cells do is they convert between chemical energy and electrical energy. And you might think, how does that happen? Well, remember when we learned about redox reactions and how they transfer electrons? That's all electricity is. It's the transfer or movement of electrons. So if we have a redox reaction, we have the potential to harness electricity from it. So this is actually really cool because this is how batteries work. So starting with the galvanic or voltaic cell, the most important thing you need to know about this is that it is a spontaneous process and it produces electrical energy. And we can harness this electrical energy. And where is the electrical energy coming from? It's coming from the chemical energy, from the redox reaction that's occurring here. So the redox reaction is occurring between iron and copper. And the setup here looks fairly complicated, but the good news is there's just a few important things you have to know about it. So over here we have a molten solution of iron and then a solid block of iron. And then over here we have a molten solution of copper and then a solid block of copper. And these blocks are connected by a wire here along which electrons can travel. And this battery here is facilitating the transfer of electrons. Another important thing you should know is that these solutions are connected by what's known as a salt bridge. And this essentially completes the electrical circuit. So you should remember from redox reactions, oil rig. Oxidation is losing electrons and reduction is gaining electrons. And that should remind you that over here, since we're losing electrons from this solution, the iron solution is being oxidized. And then over here, since we're gaining electrons in the copper solution, the copper solution is being reduced. Another cool thing you can remember is anox red cat. And this reminds you that where oxidation is occurring, this is always where the anode is. And where reduction is occurring, that's always where the cathode is. So how did we know that this was gonna be spontaneous? Well, it turns out each element has a natural tendency to want to either gain electrons or donate electrons. And we can quantify that with what's called the standard reduction potential, or E with the little degree symbol, or sometimes known as E naught. So you can see here that I've written out the standard reduction potentials for copper and iron. And they have a certain voltage associated with them. And you can see here that I wrote when E naught is positive, delta G is negative. And when we know delta G is negative, we know it must be a spontaneous reaction. So since the E naught for copper is positive, that means copper must spontaneously want to accept electrons and get reduced. But since the E naught for, for iron is negative, that means this is a non-spontaneous reaction. Delta G would be greater than zero. So iron does not want to gain electrons, it does not want to become reduced, it actually wants to do the opposite. It wants to get oxidized, it wants to give off electrons. So in this case, when the iron gets to give off electrons like it wants, and the copper gets to accept electrons like it wants, then everyone's happy. The reaction is spontaneous. It happens without any intervention. And it actually produces energy. So again, this converts chemical energy into electrical energy. In other words, it collects electrical energy from a spontaneous chemical reaction. And this is like using a battery to power a device, like having your phone in your pocket, a mobile phone that has a mobile battery that powers your phone wherever you go. So the important thing you need to know about these calculations is that E naught is always the standard reduction. So notice, even though I've written out an oxidation reaction here because that's what's happening, you have to use the E naught for ions reduction. And similarly, we use the E naught for copper's reduction, and that's actually what happens. Copper is getting reduced. So the equation to determine E cell, or the overall reduction potential of this entire system, is right here. E cell equals the E naught of the cathode minus the E naught of the anode. So here, the cathode was 0.34 volts, positive 0.34 volts, and you can just find this on a standard reduction table. And the E naught for iron was negative 0.44 volts, and again, you can find that on a table. So the cathode 
minus the anode minus a negative means this is going to be plus 0.44. We get the overall E cell is positive 0.78 volts. And again, when E cell is positive or greater than zero, it is spontaneous. Delta G is less than zero. Okay, moving on to the electrolytic cell. So this is a non-spontaneous process. It needs electrical energy to occur. So this redox reaction doesn't naturally want to happen. We have to power it. This is analogous to charging up a rechargeable battery from a wall outlet. You know, your phone is not going to charge itself. You have to plug it in and obtain the electrical energy to drive this non-spontaneous chemical reaction. So notice how we have the same setup we had before, except there's one important difference. The flow of electrons is reversed. Now it's going from the copper to the iron. And remember, iron has a natural tendency to not want to be reduced. It wants to be oxidized. It wants to go in the opposite direction because it has a negative E0. Copper, on the other hand, has a positive voltage associated with its reduction, so it loves to get electrons. It loves to be reduced. This is positive. That means it's negative delta G, and thus it's spontaneous. So naturally, the electrons want to go to the copper. Iron wants to give them up, and the copper wants to accept them. That's why this is non-spontaneous. So notice how reduction is still at the cathode, and oxidation is still at the anode. That's never gonna change. But now, the copper is the anode, and the iron is the cathode. So, using the same process we did to obtain this E cell, we can do that over here. So, again, E naught for iron is gonna be negative 0.44 volts, because we always use the standard reduction potential table to find that, negative 0.44 volts. And again, the E naught for copper even though it's being oxidized this time, we still use its reduction potential, its standard reduction potential for its E naught, and we get positive 0.34 volts. So for our E cell equation, E cathode minus E anode, this time our cathode is 0.44 volts, negative 0.44, and then we subtract E anode, so minus 0.34, and we get negative 0.78 volts. That means E cell is negative, it's not greater than zero, it's negative. Therefore, delta G is greater than zero, so this is non-spontaneous. This does not want to happen. That's why now this battery is doing work. It's actually powering this entire process. So this process converts electrical energy into chemical energy. In other words, it uses electrical energy to drive a non-spontaneous chemical reaction to occur. Okay, since I talked a little bit about standard reduction potentials, I want to go through this chart a little bit because it can be confusing. So this is an abbreviated chart. I don't have all of the elements written up here, but I just want to illustrate the concepts and how you read this chart. So standard reduction potentials essentially tell you the E naught or the voltage that's given off when a certain element is reduced at 25 degrees Celsius. And this entire chart is based around the reduction of H plus or protons. Chemists arbitrarily chose the reduction of H plus to have a voltage of zero or an E naught of zero. And this is in particular a one molar solution of H plus. And of course that means the pH is zero. So everything is based around this benchmark. We know that the reduction of protons is associated with a zero E naught or zero voltage, and then everything is built off of that. So as you go higher, you can see that the E naught gets higher, it becomes more positive, and that means it becomes more favorable. Remember, E naught greater than zero means delta G less than zero, which means it's spontaneous. This means the reaction is spontaneous as written in the forward direction. And if these reactions are spontaneous, these are all reduction potentials. So that means these things are very good at getting reduced. So I wrote that here. They're better at being reduced as you go higher. And that means they're better oxidizing agents or stronger oxidants. Remember, an oxidant is an oxidizing agent. It accepts electrons. In other words, it gets reduced. And it oxidizes something else. Oxidation is losing, so it, it takes the electrons from something else and uses it to become reduced. So as you go down, the E naught gets negative and it becomes more and more negative the further you go down. 
So this means that E0 is less than zero. The reaction is spontaneous in the reverse direction. So when E0 is less than zero, delta G is greater than zero. In other words, this stuff is non-spontaneous. This doesn't want to happen. Iron doesn't like to accept electrons. Lithium doesn't like to accept electrons. They would rather go the reverse direction in the spontaneous direction and become oxidized or lose electrons. So that's why I wrote that here. These are better at being oxidized the lower you go because they want to go the reverse direction and thus they are weaker oxidants they are weaker oxidizing agents they don't want to accept electrons and get reduced they would rather be reductants they're stronger reductants because they're better at donating their electrons to something else they donate their electrons and want to become oxidized so as you go higher up here again these are weaker Reductants. These are up here above the hydrogen. These are better at accepting electrons. These are better at donating electrons. And these uh, definitions here are sort of confusing, but just try to keep in mind if something gets oxidized, it's a reducing agent. If something gets reduced, it's an oxidizing agent. And oxidant means oxidizing agent, reductant means reducing agent. And there's also rare cases where E naught equals zero. The reaction is at equilibrium at standard conditions. And this is exactly the case with hydrogen. And remember our equation here, in order to find uh, the E naught, or the standard reduction potential of an entire electrochemical cell, you do E cathode minus E anode. So another important thing you should know is that voltage is in units joules per coulomb, and a coulomb is amps times seconds, which is essentially a measure of how much charge is going through a wire. Okay, so let me ask you a question. What's a better reductant? Lithium solid or H2 gas? Well, of course lithium, right? Because as we go down, the reductants get stronger. We get better at donating our electrons. Remember, this is negative, so it's non-spontaneous in the forward direction, but it is spontaneous in the reverse direction. Thus, lithium loves to donate electrons. It loves to become oxidized and reduce something else. Thus, it's a strong reductant. Okay, what's a better oxidant? F2 gas or H plus, 2H plus? Well, of course, the F2, right? It's a stronger oxidant because of this positive E naught, it, it, it is spontaneous in the forward direction. It loves to become reduced and to gain electrons and thus to oxidize something else. It's taking the electrons from something else and oxidizing it so it can become reduced. So it's confusing, but I promise if you go through it enough times in your head, it'll eventually sink in. Please keep looking at this chart and memorize these definitions down here and really make sure you've got it straight. So I really hope this video helped you guys out and I'll see you in the next one.